Jesus Christ, is he gone? He's gone, finally. When take it, take it, take it, take it. This is the greatest moment of his life. The Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar show. The Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar show. The Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar show. The Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar, the Jiggy Jaguar show. Show. And you're watching freaking Jiggy Jag TV. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to now say goodbye because we're going to get out of here. <laughs> I've got somebody standing behind the camera because I've overrun it. And now if I don't do that, I'm going to get in trouble. I know you come from Kansas, but there you go. This is Adrian Paul. <laughs> of that Jayhawk basketball team in gate number one in Crimson for this race only. We have poor self in gate number one. Let's hear it, Red Rooters. In gate number two, he is retired from his football coaching days, but we still let him come to the pig races. Yep, that K-State superstar in gate number two with the white silk zone. This is Bill Snodhold. I have to apologize to you all because this little piggy is plum tuckered out. He has been carrying that Royals team on his back all season long. He is tied for the major league uh, home run record this season right now. He did the all-star game. We like him a whole lot. We're glad he's here racing for us. This is Salvador Perez. <laughs> you what, you all are going to be excited, okay? Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. He's going to bring a professional pig racing team to the uh, Kansas City area, and we're going to get to be part of it. So that's really exciting. Yeah, in gate number four, usually he's number 15. He's always number one in our hearts. He's always in red. This is Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> all right, I think we are ready for race number one. Are y'all ready for the first pig race?
here today, and bless you not to handle any mess. Then I got these uh, four to the fifth to climb up here. I just wish they had a little better shoulder and maybe a little more stretch here. But great class of short arm arch cats. Congratulations. Gentlemen, please welcome the Sylvan Lucas Unified High School Band under the direction of Jennifer Feldkamp.
little more. Tell you about a little river. Oh.
gunpowder. Gunpowder is known as a solid rocket fuel. Now, as you can see, as soon as I lit it up, that went up in flames pretty quickly. It would be very difficult for me to sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you can't hear me, I'll either yell louder or I'll come out there and talk to you. Okay. My name is Kathy. I work at Apron Strings. I uh, do a lot of the cooking classes. And I do those classes with my, are you my partner or sidekick? Cohort. She wants to be a cohort today. This is Jan. She's going to be doing a lot of the scurrying about. Uh, but if I have a question, she'll stop and she'll give me an answer. If you have not figured out, we're a fairly casual pair of cooks. If you have a question, let us know. If we have a question, we may be asking you. Because one of the things that I learned best, uh, you know, I read all the manuals and stuff. But sometimes when I get input from the people that come to our demonstrations or our classes, that is really valuable information for us too. We're here today to talk about the Zabor Air Fryer. Uh, we both work for uh, Apron Strings Kitchen Store here in Hutchinson. And so this is the air fryer that we use and that we're selling. Uh, we also have a Cuisinart that is very similar to the way this one functions. Uh, how many of you already own an air fryer? Okay. How many of you have an air fryer that has the shelves that slide in? Okay. Some of you have the buckets. I don't know how much of this is going to translate over to that bucket. And so I may be asking you, do you think this will work? We're going to cook some chicken today and we're going to bake some cookies. Everybody that gets an air fryer thinks they're going to fry everything. But the biggest, worst name they could have given this is a fryer because that's not what it does. It's a convection oven. And so what it does is uses very little oil to get similar results as what you would get if you had that big pot of oil, you know, that gives it all that tasty goodness. Well, this will give a lot of that tasty goodness. It will reflect a lot of what maybe if you have a convection oven at home, you have that big box there and that's a convection oven. Well, that's what this is, only it's a micro oven. So it's probably gonna go a little faster than your standard stove because it's got a little compartment and once it heats up, it, it's good, efficient, hot air that circulates with the fan. And so that's where it gets its, its ability to cook food quickly and healthy. Uh, we're gonna talk about the use of oil. I, I use a spray bottle a lot of times. I like using this one because it, it gets a nice big wide spray for me. I can also get a little narrow, but I like the wide spray. When I squirt this, I get a quarter table or a quarter teaspoon of oil. And when you think about when you saute on the oven or you stir fry or you do it in the uh, on top of the oven or on top of the stove or in the oven, think about the amount of oil that you use when you saute and oven roast those vegetables. This squirts out about a quarter teaspoon. And so that's not very much oil. And it's still gonna give us a crispy exterior. We're gonna start out with the chicken. Jan's got some cookies that are getting ready. Uh, so I'm gonna pull the chicken out. It's back here. Today we're going to use boneless chicken thighs. Um, I think that dark meat chicken is going to stay juicier, juicier longer. If it had a bone in and a skin on it, it would be even better, but we know that time-wise, we only have an hour. Uh, time-wise, we wanted something that we could get in and get out. We've already started one batch in that one back here. We, we're going to cook this for nine minutes, pull it out, turn it over, because the heating element is in the top of this. So even though it's gonna cook underneath, it's not gonna crisp underneath. So we're gonna pull this out at nine minutes, turn it over, put it in for another nine minutes. Jan's gonna put it out, pull it out, temp it, because we wanna cook our chicken to 165 degrees. She's gonna temp it, if it needs a couple, two or three more minutes, then she'll stick it back in there. We're gonna cook it 400 degrees today. If you want to cook this chicken at 375 or 350, you would just have to up the time a little bit. And so I like 400 degrees because it gets a quick cook on 
it, and it really does kind of keep it kind of juicy that way. All right. One of the things I'm going to talk to you about is anytime you do a new appliance, it is always wise to get the cookbook, basic cookbook that goes with it. Because when I first got my multi cooker, you know, it's not an Instapot, it's a Zabor. Uh, when I first got it, I had no clue, but I got a basic cookbook and went through all the recipes. And I said, oh, I can do this. And then once I learned my machine, then I know what I can adapt my other recipes to. During the fair, Apron Streets is going to give a free, this free book with any purchase. And we are located over in the North Sunflower Building. I believe I sent people to the Meadowlark Building earlier and they're not over there. <laughs> so, yeah, when, when you came in, I said, there, there they are. <laughs> so, no, they're not in the Meadowlark Building. They're over in the North Sunflower Building back in that corner. Okay. Oh, Southwest, yeah, I don't know what my directions are. Okay, so what I did last night, uh, actually this morning I seasoned it, we're using uh, the Rub Me Down Barbecue Sweet and Spicy Rub, and this is produced by the Rub Me Down Barbecue Company here in Hutchinson. And so we're, this is the seasoning that I'm using on here, but you could use any seasoning that you want. If you just wanted to use a little salt and pepper, you're gonna get the same results that we get with this. This gives it also a little bit of color because <coughs> it has paprika in it. Uh, so what I did last night was I seasoned up my chicken and put it in the refrigerator and then when, so I'm getting ready to cook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a little spritz of oil because I want that crispy on the top of it.
it's open. Uh, if you have a multi cooker or an instant pot that seals down, and you know we're starting to learn you can't open things up. This door opens right back up. Now I'm talking about Zabor. I'm assuming they all work that way, but I can open it up, check my meat, and close it in if it starts. And because the box is so small, I don't lose heat. Like when you open your oven and you pull out that tray and you're doing all that tamping, that heat escapes. When the box is small, it heats right back to up so you don't have that issue. Okay. Last night, I decided that y'all needed cookies. Um, so I went home and I'm using the Toll House cookie recipe. And so don't ask me for the recipe because it's on the back of the package. The only difference is, is I put in the white chocolate chips and uh, dehydrated cranberries instead of the nuts and raisins. <coughs> I use a pan just like this. If you want to use a flat pan like this, you'll make sure you measure the interior of your, your, your stove or your little pot, and I know this works. So I'm going to take this around here. I'm cooking six cookies at a time, where if you have a bunch of people in your house, maybe that's not enough. But we can't, there's two of us, we can't eat three dozen cookies before they go bad. And so we kind of like to have fresh cookies, so I'll make up a roll of this make it about this big of a stick, stick it in the freezer, and then we don't want cookies, we slice it off and we bake cookies. And it makes it kind of nice because there's just two of us. My sister has one, she has a smaller unit, and she does the same thing, she's just cooking for herself, and it really is nice. And so what we're going to do, you see Jan stores paper and hers too. Maybe I'm missing the bus on this. <laughs> set me up, set me up. Paper in your too. and you want that air to circulate, you need to make sure that there's some space in the front and the back. And so this fits about in the middle, and so there's about this much space on either side of it. So I put my cookie, I'm using parchment paper too. Didn't catch on fire at home, so. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on. I think I'm gonna cook it at 375. Or about, I'm gonna put it in for six minutes. What I found is all cookie doughs are just a little bit different. So I'm going to set it for six minutes, check it, and if we need to add, we can. And so there's our cookies. And again, we've got the light on, so now it's your responsibility to make sure they don't burn. They're checking chicken. You guys are checking cookies now. You've got to keep that straight, okay? All right. With these particular cookie cookers, two of the accessories that come with it is one of these baskets. And where's mine? Boy, that looks good, then. All right. This is a rotisserie. It's hot. Oh, what a name. I put a small chicken on here, but the reality is, is I'll buy a pork loin, cut it about this long, poke a little hole in it, throw some seasoning on it, put it on here, put it in here, and I've got a rotisserie, and it goes round and round and round, and it crispies on the sides. I think probably that's the most popular meat that I cook in here. Oh, chicken is great, but my husband really likes it. I've used a pork tenderloin to do that. I have not done a lot of beef in here at this point, so that's still my, I need to figure that one out. But I do a lot of pork, a lot of chicken on here. Um, I have taken the large chicken breasts and put those on here, and then it rotates like that. For this thing is what I use for vegetables. And so I can take my vegetables, cut them up, you know, in bite-sized pieces, spritz them with a little bit of olive oil, put whatever seasoning on them, put them in here, and then this goes round and round and round, and you get a really nice, a nice uh, cook on, on your veggies. Last night, we had chicken. Did it go off? It went off. We just blew a few. Shut up, shut down. 
The chicken is almost done back here, so we might move the cookies back there. Because I think that's on a separate circuit. We've done this before. Anyway, uh, I'll put my veggies in here with a little bit of olive oil. Last night we had chicken thighs, and I have sweet potatoes out of the garden, so I chopped, cut those sweet potatoes into the one inch pieces, spritzed them with the oil, and I put a little bit of smoked salt on them. It's a real flat salt that we get, and put them in here, and so we had chicken and sweet potatoes for dinner last night. This opens like that. That's a real challenge when it's hot and you want to get them out of there, but it works, okay? This is a tool that we use to get this out of the, out of the oven because it is going to be hot when you get ready to do that. And so this has a tool. If, uh, those of you that have rotisseries, you probably have one of these to retrieve the baskets. Okay. Let's run this one back with the chicken. Or we make it. Pardon us for this commercial interruption. building on fire by plugging in another one back here. Less time, and it's not microwave. 
more time than that. But we get that nice cheesy breakfast, burritos, we roll those up with, with the meat and the cheese. The meat and the cheese and the beans and we, and we eat, oh, okay. Okay, do we have chicken done? It's an ideal thing for people to learn the basic cuts of wood carving. Uh, it can be made any size, you know, small, medium, large. Wow. This one, I, I carved the eyes so it's like he's sleeping. You know, his eyes are closed. That's Whereas great. this one looks like he's, well, not this one. This one here. Got all sorts of owls there. Yeah. 
but it's got different eyes you can see there. Wow, that's uh, cool. It's a good way to learn. Uh, simple little projects that people don't know what they're doing. And it's, making the wings there it's real basic this is and that's all there is to it wow <laughs> that's fantastic uh, a couple of years ago when we were here last year obviously they didn't have a fair but yeah two years ago the whole club got together and we made over a thousand of these and gave them out to the kids. Wow. You know, it just, they like it. I gave, I made, did a bunch and gave them to uh, second graders at school. We had a, what they called a reading, yeah. reading buddy group. Yeah. And the kids would come over and read to us. Well, at the end of the school year, we didn't want them to quit reading through the summer. <laughs> so I gave them each of these and said, these are your new reading buddies. That's fantastic. And they loved it. They kept them on their desks the last That's couple amazing. of weeks. You know, it just, it was fun. Those are really cool. There you go. <laughs> Oliver the Ogre. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's fun to play with the little things. And, wow. You know, that so, one. That's a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people eater. <laughs> yes! And if you remember the song, you're giving your age away. <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, you've got a little bit of everything here. Oh, yeah. It's, I've done some you know, big stuff and then little things. Wow. It's just fun to do. So out of all these that are here, what, what was the hardest one or the one that did the longest? Well, obviously, this one, it's much more complex and more difficult. And it just, you, know, you really never know. It, sometimes it just all kind of falls in place and everything goes out real quick. But, That's pretty fantastic. The good stuff, I've given away. <laughs> so, you know, these are things that I kept just for me. That's cool. The birds are fantastic. Yeah, those are called comfort birds. And they're made out of the different kinds of wood. You got these are cedar, olive wood, uh, spalded maple, catalpa, walnut. And you can make it out of any kind of wood. And the natural green of the wood is what creates the beauty of the bird in reality. To basically carve it up and then paint it. And then... Yeah. Uh, it's just a, a fun little hobby that anybody can do. You can set it aside and be, leave it for two weeks and come back and, oh, pick it up again. I've done several of those for like 40th anniversary things. I'll do like red ones and, and whatever. And uh, so I that kind of thing. So you can do a lot of different things with some simple stuff. And, I am living proof you don't have to have a big budget to do it. <laughs> I live on Social Security, so I use that stuff. But um, uh, Delphi sells a lot of stuff like you can buy a bag of scrap and get a good variety. You can buy different kinds of different sizes of scrap and uh, so you can get different stuff. So it makes it convenient for somebody who's learning out what to do. And, Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. So when I do this, somewhere there's going to be a square in. Here we go. I, I have a ruler along here. I can line up what I want width-wise, you know, or, or and, uh, and this cuts usually, it's not on line, cuts on zero. You have it lined up correctly. 
Welcome to any of this. Sam? Oh, I, huh? <laughs> I plan on it. <laughs> okay, good, good. I'm glad you do. So what 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 is some of this made out of? Okay. Besides soybeans. <laughs> okay, this is our um, the muffins that have multi grains in them: whole wheat flour and uh, flax meal and oatmeal. We're supposed to have a all-purpose with some soy blend in it. That's cool. But uh, that got left at home, <laughs> so it's all we just use equal amounts of the others. So uh, we had to make some substitutes. And then you've got. And then we got our apple salad, and it's got uh, the mayonnaise and the sour cream, soy sour cream in it, and then just a lot of uh, all their celery and grapes and chicken and. Wow. Two kinds of apples. And then you have a drink? Yes. What is the drink made it's of? Smoothie. It is made from soy milk, uh, tofu, and uh, strawberry yogurt, <laughs> blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, wow. and strawberries, and a little honey. So, very tasty and very nutritious. That's fantastic. So, to number 
107, Carly Rothfuss of Dickinson County showing zips just right. Second to number 159, Emily Becker of Osborne County showing I am cashed. And first to number 133, Faith Beasley of Stevens County showing Mr. Big Romance. Congratulations on a nice class. These exhibitors have taken an extra step to do the level two testing. We appreciate your extra work. Thank you for exhibiting. 